I broke my ankle about a month ago. I am making this video so that in case it happens to you, hopefully not, but in case it happens to you, you would at least have a rough idea of what you can expect. So in the first part of this video, I'm going to talk about what happened, like how I broke my ankle. In the second part, I'll talk about my experience so far in my one month living with a broken ankle. And in the third part, I'll talk about what happens next, the next couple months of my rehab, what I'm going to do with my channel and um, that kind of stuff. How did I break my ankle? It was really dumb. So in longboarding, one of the ways you stop is by sliding. And one of the slides is a uh, glove down toe side slide. So I was practicing glove down toe side slides. I've done it many times. I just never did it really well. So I was practicing that slide and I fell. My ankle broke. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was because I fell. But the main reason was that I was exhausted. You see, the night before that day, I barely slept. And then that day I had already been skating for several hours and um, I just kept pushing myself. You know that feeling where you're trying something and you just want to try one more time and then you try it one more time and you try it one more time again? Well, there was just one too many one more times and my body just gave up. I wasn't even going fast. I was almost at a complete stop. Somehow I sloppily fell off the board. My feet came off the board and my right foot just kind of went. I wasn't trying anything new. I didn't fall in a way that I hadn't fallen before. I was just too tired. That was the main reason. I mean, it's so stupid. Like it wasn't some high speed fall where I hit a guardrail or anything. It was just, I was almost at a complete stop. So I was with a few friends and at first we thought it was just a dislocated foot. Actually, I'm not even sure if a foot can be dislocated. I know like you can have a dislocated shoulder, right? But I, I don't know. We all just kind of assumed that it was dislocated. Like nobody assumed that it was broken. But then they took me to the hospital and the doctor took one look and he was like, yep, it's broken. You're going to need surgery. So uh, yeah, that's how it happened. You might want to know how painful was it. At the beginning, like when the ankle first broke, it was really painful. I remember I was just like, I was lying on the ground. I was going, Ugh. actually I was like, Ugh. but after a few minutes, the pain gradually went away and got replaced with numbness. It was just totally numb. If I moved it or if I touched it, then it would still be painful. Like it was really sensitive. When we were in the car on the way to the hospital, anytime the car hit a bump, it hurt. But otherwise, if I didn't move the foot, if I didn't touch it, then it was just numb. The most painful part was when I like after I checked into the hospital, one of the doctors, he uh, told me to relax. He was going to try to move my foot a bit. I don't know why, just to like see what's going on with my ankle or something. And when he moved it, ah, that, that was like the first time in my life where I was like, that was more painful than when the ankle first broke. The kind of broken ankle that I have is called a bi... bimolarum. Supposedly, it's the second most common type of broken ankle. So the surgery was going to be like very routine type of surgery. The surgery was scheduled for two days later. So this is something that I didn't know. This is my first time staying in a hospital and my first time breaking a bone, actually. I thought that with a broken bone and if it needed surgery, it had to be done right away or something. But I guess not. They scheduled my surgery for two days later. The reason was that, well, I mean, there could be a couple reasons like if you're at a really busy hospital it could just be because they're too busy and they may have to schedule you for many days later just because they're too busy but i was in a hospital that was kind of remote the reason that they wanted to wait two days was because my foot was totally swollen and if they perform surgery on a swollen foot that affects the healing process i guess i mean that's what they told me the time came for the surgery they moved me from my bed onto the gurney and then on the gurney they transported me into the surgery room the surgery room looked really like, I wish I could take a photo of it. It looked really high tech. It looked really sci-fi actually. Like it was all white. It was brightly lit. So they let me choose two things. They let me choose if I wanted to have a stronger painkiller after the surgery was done or just the normal painkiller. The stronger one cost extra. <laughs> I was like, yeah, give me the stronger one. And the second thing they asked me was if I wanted to stay awake during the surgery or if I wanted to be passed out. If I chose to be awake, then they were just gonna numb the lower half of my body, but I would be awake and I would be able to hear them working on my foot. I don't want that. So I chose the uh, general anesthesia. I chose to be asleep. They gave me the sleeping gas and within a few seconds, my vision started to blur and I could feel myself falling asleep. Next thing I knew, somebody was waking me up and I said, it's done. <laughs> it was literally just like falling asleep and then waking back up. And then for the next seven days, I was basically, for the most part, I was just lying in bed with my foot propped up. They said my foot needed to remain higher than my heart. So I was lying down, right? And my, my heart is around here. My foot needed to be a little bit higher. And that was to help reduce 
uh, swelling. Going to the bathroom was kind of difficult because, okay, so I wasn't really in any pain. I guess the painkiller was working, except when I got up. So anytime I was vertical, the blood would rush down to my foot and the pain would start to uh, come to my foot. Otherwise, I wasn't really feeling any pain. I've read other people's experiences and I think everyone's experience may be different. For some people, it was painful. For me, I wasn't really experiencing any pain. I mean, you know, of course I had the painkiller, but so the uh, extra strong painkiller thing, it only lasted for about two days and then I was back on the regular one. But even on the regular one and after I was out of the hospital, I, I wasn't really experiencing that much pain. So anytime I went to the bathroom, you can't go to the bathroom lying down, right? I mean, well, I mean, actually you can, but you would need this, uh, this poop container thing but I didn't want to use that. For urination, I did have this pee bottle and I would just pee in there, dump it out every once in a while. But for pooping, I still had to go to the bathroom. That was the only time where my leg would be in pain. The longer that I wasn't lying horizontal, the more painful I felt like my foot got. Like it felt like my foot was gonna explode. Like I could feel the swelling. I could feel it getting bigger and bigger. It just felt like it was gonna blow up. But once I lie back down after a few minutes, that feeling would gradually go away. For the first few days, I would have like seven to nine different bags of different kinds of IV drips. Once a bag became empty and a nurse would come and give me a different bag, they did tell me to try to move my foot. They would give me contradictory info. So one nurse would tell me not to move my foot. Another nurse would tell me to try to move my foot. And the doctor is also like, I felt like there were two different doctors and what they were telling me to do was like, a little bit contradictory also, but I couldn't move it that much anyway because my foot was wrapped in gauze. It wasn't in a cast, it was just in gauze. Every two days they would change it, but yeah, when it was in the gauze, I couldn't really move it anyway. Like I could move my toes. Like they would tell me to try to stretch my toes, uh, like move my toe upward, like what they call it, dorsal flexion or something, and then move it down. They said to do it, uh, was it 100 times a day or 200 times or something? Now I've been out of the hospital for about three weeks and there have been noticeable improvements. My first week out of the hospital, I still pretty much had to lie horizontally. I think it was more than a week. I feel like the first two weeks out of the hospital, I was mostly horizontal. Anytime I was vertical, like if I tried to stand up on one foot, just like at the hospital, my foot would be in pain and it would, it would feel like it was gonna explode. But gradually that got better. Like right now, I haven't really tried for more than a few minutes, but I can go to the bathroom to poop and it's not really an issue. Like my foot wouldn't be in pain anymore. And there wasn't anything special that I did to make that happen. You just need to give it time to heal. The doctor and the uh, physical therapist, they still tell me to keep my leg raised because my foot still is a little bit swollen. It's much better now than before, but it's still kind of swollen. So my first week out of the hospital, everything was really difficult at first, but things got gradually easier. At the beginning, like even after I left the hospital, I was still peeing in the uh, in the bottle. And after the bottle's full, dump it out. But now I can go to the bathroom without experiencing much pain. And I'm also much better at using the wheelchair now. So things that you can expect to be difficult are stuff like everything really. Like one thing I totally cannot do even now is taking the garbage out. <laughs> Someone else has to do that because I can't walk and I can't exactly take my wheelchair outside. Using the wheelchair outside is really difficult. It's much more difficult than I thought it would be because you know like you see in movies you see videos of people being in wheelchairs and they're outside by themselves i haven't been outside by myself in a wheelchair yet because i don't think i would be able to get around by myself like i don't know about your city but in my city in shanghai it's just too difficult there are too many steps and even the places with wheelchair access i feel like they're not really designed so that you can get around on your own like you still need assistance like for example some wheelchair ramps are just really steep like even a wheelchair ramp that's not steep it's still really difficult to go up like that's, that's something i found out about using a wheelchair any incline is just really difficult and like not just incline but like anytime there's a slope whether it's downhill or uphill or just sideways it's always difficult when you're in a wheelchair if the ground is not flat like if there's like some kind of protrusion or something like there are just so many situations where you can get stuck i learned a lot about being in a wheelchair <laughs> it's not easy i made an exercise routine for myself where i could do a full body exercise without putting weight on my foot because you're, you're gonna have muscle atrophy. Like even if you do exercise, you're still gonna have muscle, muscle atrophy, especially on your calf. And then my second week out of the hospital, which is three weeks after surgery, I started going to rehab. I started seeing a, a physical therapist. And so she gave me a bunch of moves to do. There were a lot 
lot of leg exercises, not just for the ankle. Like for the ankle, the first set of moves that she gave me to do for the first week was just moving the foot up and down. But there were a bunch of other leg exercises. Well, I guess it's more like the legs and the hip area, not just the legs. And then for my second week of rehab, she gave me more exercises to do. So more movements of the foot, like moving the foot, like rotating the foot internally and externally and uh, trying to pick stuff up with my toes. Also standing, I can now stand and put a little bit of weight on my broken ankle. Uh, my physical therapist, she said that even though the bones are still healing, I should still try to put a little bit of weight on it. The exercises that she gave me in the first week, it would take about two hours of my day. Like I would do one hour in the morning, one hour in the afternoon or evening. And with the second set of exercises, it's now like three hours total per day. I've never exercised for three hours a day. I mean, just like working out at home, working out or even at gym or whatever. I've never worked out for <laughs> three hours a day. So this is kind of new to me. I hate workouts, like workout routines. I hate doing them. So what I'm doing now is I would watch a movie at the same time that I'm working out. So I've been watching a lot of movies. <laughs> I haven't taken an actual shower for like a month. <laughs> like ever since I broke my ankle. The way I wash myself is by using a towel. Towel in a bucket, put some soap in and just wipe myself. For washing your hair, most barber shops they can wash your hair. So that's one way to do it. Otherwise you just have to get someone else to do it. I mean, I guess technically you could do it by yourself. One month after the surgery, I had a follow-up check. I had another set of x-rays and the doctor said, yeah, everything is looking fine. That seems to be standard procedure. One month after surgery, you get another set of x-rays just to check on things. So what's next? Roughly speaking, I should be able to walk by week 12. I may not be able to walk well, but I should be able to at least do a little bit of walking. So that's wearing normal shoes. By week six, a couple of weeks from now, I should be able to walk while wearing a boot, like a uh, compression boot. So far, I've not been wearing a boot or anything. I don't have a cast. I don't have any gauze on my foot. It's just my naked foot right now. I don't know exactly what's gonna happen next or what my walking situation is gonna be. I'm just gonna keep doing rehab and and see how things go. The next milestone for me is gonna be to be able to walk or at least to be able to stand and do a little bit of walking. And the next major milestone will be like actual walking in regular shoes. And beyond that, I guess the next steps are, you know, jumping, running, all the stuff that normal people can do, or sorry, not normal, but able-bodied people can do, I guess. Oh, I guess I'm disabled right now, huh? Hmm. As for my YouTube channel, <laughs> in a way, I'm very fortunate that my main job right now is doing YouTube. I don't have to go to the office or anything. I can work from home. I can kind of work from home. The bad thing is my YouTube channel is about electric skateboards and I can't really ride an electric skateboard right now. Fortunately, I have Max. So Max is going to do all the writing for me. My reviews are going to be based on his writing experience. So Max, he weighs about the same as me. He... I guess he writes better than me. And as for the electronics, he's way more knowledgeable. He's a DIY builder. I often consult him on this kind of stuff anyway. Basically what I'm saying is he's way more qualified than I am <laughs> at reviewing electric skateboards. I'm still gonna be in the videos. I was actually hoping that I would be able to make videos about other topics, but I don't know. It might just be electric skateboards because I have, I still have so many boards lined up. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I would like to make videos about other stuff. I think I will because it's still gonna be a while before I start skating again. Before I step on a skateboard again, I want to make sure that I can take a fall. I want to make sure that I can run off the board and roll on the ground. Main thing is I don't want to break my ankle again while it's still healing, while it's still recovering. So yeah, very likely I will cover other topics. That's about all I have to say for now. I probably forgot to mention a lot of stuff. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Hope you're all doing well. Bye.